Welcome to Love Them Knives channel. We're going to talk Remet today. Remet Rhino. Okay. So these are a budget knife. You can get them on Amazon. And here's the information that's upside down and backwards. The Remet Pocket Knife Rhino. Remet Rhino. Do I have this upside down backwards? No. Okay. So you can get them in this green. Or you can get them. In the black. All right. And this is G10. I believe this is G10 as well. And I just pulled this off of uh, Amazon. They're a three inch blade. So this is smaller than the other Rhino that I did previously. And I'll put the link to the original Rhino that I did months ago uh, down below here. Okay. So this is the small Rhino or the mini Rhino. The baby rhino. Um, G10 handle. Yeah, I guess so. Both of them are G10. The RH0210. And uh, right here, where was it? Sent? Okay, $40 on this. Now, they'll bop around a little bit. I saw another listing on them for $55. But there was always a coupon code. Uh, that you could use. Now, this is $40 here. Next page shows $40.71. Okay. Two-day delivery. So, they're in stock at, at Amazon. Click this box and you get 20% coupon. So, what does that get you down to? About $32 all in. And you can get it, bang, pretty quick. Okay. But it'll come to my place in Lake Placid. So, too bad. Yeah, if you order it, it comes to me first, and I'll let you know if I want to send it. Oh, just kidding. Okay, no. <laughs> but here's some more inflammation about it if you're interested. It's lightweight. It's flippable. Well, I mean, lightweight is a, you know, uh, kind of a subjective term, but... D2 steel, 59 to 61. Well, that's a pretty broad range, so I'm sure it's probably in there somewhere. Okay. Semi-stainless uh, steel. So, okay, ceramic bearings, which is not bad for a $40 knife, right? Um, here's the rest of it. And, of course, they always go through the, oh, quality craftsmanship and blah, blah, blah. No, it's well made. Good fit and finish. It's a good solid knife. Um, and it's a budget knife, so no, uh, I like to remit knives, all that kind of thing. And so here, here they're talking about the fact that they do have ceramic bearings, etc., etc., etc. We'll probably take one of these apart and check it out. Okay, so there's that 5.3 ounces uh, item weight. Let's we'll check that to see if they're that uh, heavy. So that's not lightweight. Three inch blade drop point etc etc 7.3 inches overall length which is true it is true now let's weigh it up now that we've been staring at paper you want to you want to look at the knife well do you well there's four ounces so it's not 5.3 maybe that was the whole package and everything for shipping okay so that could have been that 113.6 grams okay now one thing there is not is jimping on the flipper tab. Even though you can kind of push button, or maybe it kicks you back into more of a light switch situation, but there it is. Uh, you've got ambidextrous thumb studs. Can you flip it open with them? Yes, you can, okay? D2 blade, like I said before, like it said on the paperwork, and then you can get it in this black g10 or the green g10 with a black blade all right and will they cut anything i don't know let's check it out okay there's that one seemed to do reasonably well and actually the non-coated blade seems sharper than the coated blade which doesn't surprise me actually um okay yeah, all right yeah, yeah, it's it's good. I mean, it's not bad. It's uh, it's pretty much standard factory sharpness. This is a little 
little bit better, and they'll probably vary a little bit depending on who at the factory is sharpening what knives, etc., etc. So you've got two different. You got green, you got black. I'm sure I've mixed up the boxes now. But uh, are they drop shutty? Wow, that seems to be pretty drop shutty right there. And let's take a little closer look. Okay, so we've got a liner. These are not nested liners. They're right out there, okay? It seems to give it a little bit more robust structural feeling when they do that. Deep carry pocket clip. Can we kick it over here? Yeah, we can, okay? So it's sitting right on top of the scale so they didn't mill in a slot for it to go into. Therefore, you can pop it right over this way. And you know what? The hardware doesn't look bad. I mean, it's not your typical cap screw type thing. And I'm looking around here, nah, I don't have anything right there. But you know what I'm saying? So these are kind of a nice machine screw looking thing. And, you know, it's machine G10 coming in here. A little bit more comfort for grip, for your little finger choil area. And then, of course, there's your lockup. And that's 25 to 30%. And then this little bit of machined away here. So you can do that. The flipper tab hits you in the thumb. It's already over the detent ball. It's centered. Blade play lock rock. Nah, none of that going on. So, I mean, I guess looking at that, as I just showed you the paperwork, it was $40. Now, it may not be that once I post this and whatever, because they probably have special discounts that they do and then don't do and whatever but if you could catch it on that with a an additional 20 percent off so 32 dollars i'm a prime member uh for whatever reason <laughs> i have that prime video too and i'm kind of wondering why but um yeah it's kind of hard to get one of those uh, binge watch uh, series anymore uh, that I really like, but, uh, so since I'm a prime member, I get free shipping. So, uh, now I have to pay tax. So it's not going to be $32, but it's going to be a little bit over $32 for each knife. But in that regard, I'm getting D2. Really, if you look at it, the fit and finish is not bad on this. Nice little edge. Looks like a bead blast going on here. Ambidextrous thumb studs. Um, hold on. Let's pull this out. Okay. No, we do have a stop, and it does say D2 on that uh, top of the blade on the spine there. Come up here, and I guess that's not really touching, you know, because sometimes the thumb studs will be the stop, right? But here we've got the stop, so... Roll it back around, and then that's the stop again. Okay, so bing, bang, just like that, okay? Looks like we've done a little bit of skeletonized on the liners, so weight relieving there. We got a little area for a lanyard to go on this lanyard pin. It looks like the backspacer has been machined or whatever, injection molded or whatever it is to have a little cut away area where they could put the little lanyard pin across there so you can put a lanyard on there but it's still not going to interfere with the blade okay or any of that so and get back to the green one let's see how that goes okay i mean that's got a nice little drop hits you on the thumb tucks right in and I haven't done anything to mess with the pivots or anything. So this is the way they are out of the box. Okay. So if you like the Remet Rhino, this and that. And of course, this is the Remet Chameleon that I did not too long ago. And let's wipe, let's wipe the lube off. I think I, did I take this apart? I don't remember taking this apart. But here it is. And this is titanium and then they did that flame anno or whatever you want to call it lightning anno on the titanium insert here m390 an axis lock type of mechanism here and i did a video on this just recently so 
And they have some other high-end ones like this that are like $195. Now, they have coupon specials on these, too, so you won't pay a full $195. You may end up $170 or something like that. But um, they have several others that are really interesting. And they have that new gravity knife. Take a look at my TACCOM. And I should have my TACCOM video from SHOT Show in late January, okay? It's TACCOM, T-A-K-C-O-M. Now, there were two guys at the TACCOM booth and one of them had, I mean, they, they also incorporated Remet knives in their, in their booth, okay? They had a table, separate table there with Remet knives, okay? And they had a Remet gravity knife there. Check that out. Way interesting. But they've got some good looking designs in the premium in the premium group now. That are coming out. And you know what? Wow. Uh, what was it? The WD07? That was the first one that was carbon fiber, titanium, M390. I actually had it tested. It's real M390. And right off the top of my head, I can't remember what the, you know, what the Rockwell was. But I think it was in the green zone. I think it was higher than 60. Okay. So... I don't know. I don't know what to think overall about Remet other than they are they are really making a push to be an enthusiast knife company instead of just like your also ran Amazon budget brand, okay? So they're really pushing on if you look at their Instagram posts they are doing a hell of a job. They're putting some really interesting models out there. And this one, Crown Spine, doing some nice stuff. It's, they, they, they have some attractive models. But then again, this is kind of how they started with the budget, pretty much. But then the WD-07, I believe, that one wasn't that far into their foray into the knife world before they were starting to at least take a shot at the premium market. And, you know, premium knives now, what are they, 400, 450? They can run up into the fives, even hit six, you know, that kind of thing. You get some of these knives that are OEM by Riot, but it's an American designer. And you get the Moku Tai kit and blah, 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 whatever. And then you're hitting six hundred dollars right on the right on the head. So, um, so one hundred and ninety five minus whatever their coupon is twenty dollars or whatever. I mean, that's still that's really pretty damn cheap for a premium knife. Although, no, you don't get the name recognition, right? But uh, it's fun if you want to just kind of check it out just for shits and giggles. And some knife like this. Uh, it's good. It's a good little user. It's got a nice little drop shut action to it. It has good lock up on it. Fit and finish is as good as any knife in its class and really up into the 50, 60, 70 dollar knives, right? It's, I mean, they're so close now because of the way their machines and their tech and all their stuff. It's just a matter of doing the final fit and finish and they seem to do it here. You know, I mean, six, seven years ago, I was catching knives that seemed almost like they were too sharp here. And they almost felt like they were going to cut you because these things were not properly deburred and da, da, da. But now, no, this is good. This is as good as whatever. You name the brand, budget brand, and it's there. So, Remet. They've got a lot of different models there on Amazon, so check it out. And I think it's fascinating. I think it's fascinating. But uh, this is only 3-inch blade, and it's like 7.3 inches overall length. So here you go, 3-inch blade, which is around 75 millimeters. Now, down here, 
three and a quarter, which is more like, you know, 82 millimeters. And then overall, seven and a quarter, I guess. I was going to say 7.3, but it's 7.25 at 18.4 centimeters. See what I'm saying? So no, and they're four ounces. They're not super lightweight, but they're not that heavy. They're pretty carryable, and they're right and left-hand friendly. And then with the flipper tab, unfortunately doesn't have jimping on it, but with the flipper tab and the ambidextrous thumb stud, no problem there. Now, I wonder if I can flick this, if I've got enough showing. Yeah, I can flick it out of that little fuller thing they got going on there, that little cutout. And it's not a complete cut through, but it's enough for my finger to get on there. And thumb stud, no problem there either to kick that open, right? Now, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. Now, that detent's plenty strong enough. Now, that's... It's not a front flipper, which I would want lighter detent if it was a front flipper. But this being a top flipper and or a flicker, it seems just about right as far as the detent goes. It's definitely not light. It's medium, but it's not overly strong. So it's just about perfect in the Goldilocks zone, really, for detents. And it's comfortable in the hand. But this is pretty neutral. So, and I can get all my fingers on there just barely, but I can, okay? And then reverse grip, that's good too. That's good too. So, fatty fat, is it fat? It, it seems a little more, you know, robust than some. 13.3 millimeters, yeah, it is. A lot of them are about 12 to 12 and a half. 0.552, not bad, not bad. That, you know, the paramilitary is a 0.45, so it's definitely more slender, but this is not overly thick, okay? And probably blade stock is around three millimeter. Yeah, looks like, yeah, 2.8, okay. So there you go, okay? N you know, it's the size a lot of people like, three, three and a quarter inch blade, depending on where you want to measure it. Seven and a quarter overall length. Okay, not too heavy, not overly light, uh, but a good handful here as far as thickness on the handle. Grippy enough with the G10. And so, I mean, there's a lot to like about these knives. Now you gotta look at the overall design. Is it something you like? I think it's gonna be a good all-purpose blade. Okay, for cutting, doing just general cutting tasks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it seems to be solid. There's no blade play or lock rock, and it doesn't seem like it's probably going to let go real easy because that's a pretty good bite right there for that lock bar to have hold of. So now you're in pretty good shape there. Now kick this open because we got to pull this out and. Let's see what we got. Okay, so in this thing, you get, it's just the knife's going to be in here. Now, they are giving you actual tool where you can disassemble your knife, right? And then in here also, a microfiber cloth. Okay, so you do get a microfiber cloth. No, you don't get a zipper pouch, but you get the tool. What do you want for anywhere from as low as $32 up to $40, $45, depending on what they're running these for at the time but uh yes i mean i think that's pretty good value for the money what can i say i mean there's knives on amazon that were on amazon historically you know several years ago and now they're mainstream stuff right even being carried by blade hq and other retailers so they come and not all of them make that pinnacle, but some of them do. And uh, like petrified fish knives, it's like blowing it out. Bostied is awesome. Ramat, might want to kind of keep an eye on them. They are really getting into the more premium and they're doing a good job, you know, with these budget knives as well. 
Okay, so which way do we want to disassemble this knife? And uh, boy, that was easy. Okay, so super easy. Oh, no, nope. we're into number sixes now. Okay, not unusual still. Not unusual to have number sixes on the body. And there we go. Boom, just right there. Now we got a pocket clip. And really, this is not being uh, stubborn about disassembly and let's pull this off and we've got two screws that look the same uh, same size okay now we've got the scale on the lock bar side here it is now we've got the liner on the lock bar side no screws holding it on here there it is free and easy can we take it off yes we can uh, we got some skeletonizing going on in here ceramic detent ball and of course interesting that they have put uh, a washer on a steel liner kind of kind of strange i mean usually if you have a steel liner they forego the washer because you don't need one it's steel okay and here's a little here's your little lanyard piece there and then what do we got here okay so we've got ceramic bearings front and back okay now have we got anything that's keeping this from spinning no no we don't uh but we can hold on to it in the front and the back to break it open so we don't have to worry about too much thread locker because we can at least put a wrench on both sides and break it apart so we're in good shape everything's just falling out of it Here's your standoffs, etc. And this is skeletonized as well. Here's your blade. Here's your backspacer. That's G10 as well. Came right off. Here's your ceramic bearings on one side. And then they're on the other side there too. Okay. Right here. And there's your blade. Okay. So, Remet. Uh, and there's the... There's the... Uh, bearings again so that's your disassembly dank okay rum at yeah the rhino the little rhino little rhino okay not the big one the little one but you know what boy they're sure affordable and you know for the, there's a lot of guys out there they want to stay around the three inch blade length and you know i understand you want something that's not overly visible you know but it's nice it's fairly discreet carry but it could be a work dog for you too because you don't have any money in it right and so i get that i get that yes yes there's definitely lots of place in the world for three inch and even sub three inch bladed knives and you know what there's still enough blade there to get almost all the little chores you need to get done right there okay so yes absolutely the rhino mini whatever you want to call it right but check them out look them over because they even have some high-end stuff that actually we verified and tested as to be true to form so no deception going on here just good knives for the buck really good value all right take care my friends yes we love them knives you guys stay sharp